Afternoon, Miss uh, Suda Cayley. My name is Ian Marshall, and this is my colleague Yvonne Glover. We are reviewing your application for asylum within the United Kingdom. This is a 10-minute appointment, at the end of which we'll have established the validity, or otherwise, of your claim, and we should be contacting the director of Yarlswood Immigration Centre with our decision immediately. If your application is unsuccessful, you will be deported to your country of origin without delay. Shall we begin? So, Miss Uda Cayley, you arrived in the United Kingdom on March 12th, 2016 at Heathrow Airport. Your application for asylum has been placed on the detained fast track. You wish to assert your right of asylum on the grounds of your homosexuality. Are you gay, Miss Suda Cayley? Do you swing the other way? Can you prove, Miss Suda Cayley, any evidence in store for this perhaps genetic flaw? Do you tune into Radio 4? Does Sandy Toxvig do it for you? Are you a devotee of sport? Are you keen on playing soccer? Who's pinned up inside your locker? That Claire Balding's a fine filly. Does she make you go all silly? Do you wish you had a willy? Do you wear dungarees, Doc Martin? Do you shave your armpit hair? Do you own a bra at all to tame that very bouncy pair? Your pornographic taste. Are they explicit or just mild? When it comes to reading matter... What do you think of Oscar Wilde? Have you ever had a man, dear? Do you know just what you're missing? When you do it with a woman, is there something more than kissing? Can you cite us an example of a relationship you've had? Or are you just pretending? Are you actually quite sad? Are you trying all this on because you'd like a better life? We've no evidence you're lesbian. You've no girlfriend and no wife. In my client's country, homosexuality is illegal. In your country, it's illegal. Of that we are aware. Tell me, when you go to bed, do you wear pyjamas or go bare? What toys and dildos do you own? Do they make you moan and groan? Do you have sex on the phone? We can check your answers out. We've got you under observation. Tell us, Miss Suda Cayley, do you indulge in masturbation? What? Your lawyer looks as if she wants to throw in something here. For putting too much pressure on my client. Well, we are under pressure here to get people sent home. To judge each case objectively on the facts alone. Make everything transparent. Follow guidelines on the way, using frameworks and best practice. Benchmarks come into play. She can't get a word in edgeways? Is that what you're saying? So why don't you speak for your client? We'll be all ears, my friend. Though it may not make a difference to what happens in the end. I'm Jane Hughes. I'm new. I, I joined Brewer and Lindley on Monday. Mr Lindley said there wasn't enough legal aid money to send one of the partners, so he gave me the notes and said to do my best. My client needs better representation. She needs someone with more experience than me. This isn't fair. This is happening more often since the cuts to legal aid. But it makes our jobs much easier. Deportation, I'm afraid. Please wait, I'll try. Uh, we've got... Uh, Three minutes. You mentioned that my client is under observation. According to these notes, there is closed circuit television in her cell. She is under 24 hours surveillance. The officers watching her are all men. Miss Suda Cayley isn't on suicide watch. She's never harmed herself. She does not know the purpose of the cameras. Miss Suda Cayley has reason to be sensitive about observation by male officers. In my client's native country, in prison she was raped by prison officers repeatedly. It was sanctioned by prison authorities as a method of treating lesbian women in jail. A group of male officers intimidated her, harassed her, and systematically sexually assaulted her. She was held for 15 months without trial. She had no rights within the laws of her own country. Not surprisingly, the prison kept no record of this abuse. Ms. Suda Cayley showed my colleague physical scars, which she said are the results of beatings she received whilst in jail. Here are the photographs. This is the extent of the concrete evidence. Finally, my client's family have cut off contact with her. The elders of their church regard her as an evil spirit. They've shunned her. 
they subjected her to exorcism. Ms. Suda Cayley puts her trust in the British justice system. I hope what I've read out today along with these photographs is sufficient to demonstrate that to send my client home would be to put her at certain risk. Miss Hughes, you've done quite well there. Considering you're new. And now we've got some evidence. I'll tell you what we'll do. These pictures are of no use without a medical report. No time for that. So here's our verdict. Case 13, deport. Your client's clearly damaged, both physically and into her mind. She's been put off men for life. She'll be depressed, I think you'll find. She'll be no asset to this country. She can't hold down a profession. She needs psychiatric help. What a horrible confession. <laughs> She's been treated very badly. She may be a worthy cause. But it's not our job to deal with other countries' flaws. The world is full of tragic cases. We see them every day. We can't let everybody in because they say they think they're gay. You will learn in due course to grow a thicker skin. Oh, we'd all be out of jobs if we let everybody in. The politicians wouldn't like it. We must apply the legislation and thus fulfil the wishes of the voters of this nation. Don't get involved. Detach yourself. It doesn't do to think. Send your client back to Yarlswood. Then come join us for a drink. <laughs>